Well, Mr. Morgan, it's something like not far off 20 years since we um, have had devolution in this country. And um, the Wales Bill and Act has been and gone. The challenges of Brexit are appearing on the horizon in terms of the devolved parliaments. Where do you think we are now? Has we, have we gone far enough or are there problems? How do you see the picture? Well, may I make one point to start with? I respectfully disagree that devolution is confined to the last 20 years. All right. It goes back essentially to the formation of the Office of Secretary of State for Wales in yes. 1964. Yeah. That was the first time that the fact of Wales as a land and nation was acknowledged in the British Constitution. Yeah. Up to then, we weren't there. And it seemed to me, looking back at it now, up to that point, nothing was possible at all. We did not exist. From that point onward, everything almost is possible. And there has been, of course, a steady process of devolution. The greatest and most significant act of devolution was the creation of the Office of Secretary of State for Wales. Yes. But in the last 20 years, of course, we've been involved with the Welsh Assembly and... Um, I have been a very great believer, of course, in, in devolution. If by devolution you mean the transfer to a land and nation that is subservient to another country, or the powers and the rights and the recognition it should have as a land and nation. The mechanics of devolution, I think, by now leave a great deal to be desired. We have been getting dribs and drabs of various hues and nature and I think that we have in the last 12 months most certainly in the Wales Act of uh, this year we have been swindled. What I mean is this the government trumpeted the fact that it was creating a reserve constitution for Wales on the same par and basis as Scotland and Northern Ireland. What is a reserve constitution? It means that you create for the sub-parliament a body to which you transfer everything, save and accept a few small basic matters which lie with the imperial parliament. Matters involving the uh, succession to the crown, peace and war, foreign policy, fiscal policy, etc., etc., a few. But you know the number of reservations there have been in relation to, to Wales? 197. And the, I think that one has got to examine the lack of genuineness there. In the case of many of those, there are things which scream out for local decision. Yeah. You know the expression um, subsidiarity. Yeah. A, an European concept and a very healthy concept that you should try and decide a matter that involves a particular area as near to that locality as is humanly possible, all other things being equal. I subscribe to that ideal totally. That to me is one aspect of um, uh, 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 devolution. But now there's a long story to this. It starts in the year 2014. There was an application made by the Attorney General for the United Kingdom challenging the decision of the uh, Assembly for Wales to determine the level of wages for agricultural workers. No, said the um, UK government, you can't do this. This is employment. Employment does not belong to you people in Wales. And although it may involve agriculture, which is your province, this is essentially employment. No, said the divisional court. If in fact you have devolved large areas of a certain type, in this case, agriculture, then unless it is specifically accepted and excluded, there is what is called the silent transfer. What did that mean? It meant that Wales had hundreds of rights by way of devolution greater than we ever thought. Now, many people thought then, well, that's excellent. We'll have to cash in on that. The government determined that it wouldn't do so. And to prevent that happening, it brought about the Wales this bill. new bill, yes. which does not increase devolution, it reduces, reduces devolution, it, which cabins and confines it. 
Yeah, the problem is, listen, isn't it? We're we are faced with a system that believes Whitehall that believes in a centralised system. Yes. Now the way how how can we change that from now on? Well, let me tell you how it how it happened. Um, when they were determining then what powers should be reserved and what powers should be transferred, I think the wrong question was asked by the Secretary of State for Wales of the various heads of departments, the mandarins of Whitehall, who were dealing with all the other matters. The question was asked, what would you like to see reserved? And what they said in their hearts, although not in their mouths, was every blinking thing we could yeah. think of, everything yes. that demeans yeah. and reduces Wales, that's what they believe in. the mere cipher, that's what they believe in. Yeah. The old colonial, imperial attitude towards Wales. Now, the question that should have been asked would be, what are the matters that you regard as being holy and necessary to be reserved? And if so, what is the justification in each and specific case? A very different question, yes. which would have given a very different result, a result which would have placed us on the same part of Scotland and Northern Ireland. And there is in those cases the principle of subsidiarity. In other words, that unless there is a very good reason to the country, a matter should not be reserved. Yeah. It should be the province of the... Um, uh, but the problem is, you see, Mr. Morgan, despite all the hard efforts, people like yourself, David Wigley, Elidiot Morgan, even Peter Hayne, very few in the House of Commons, by the way, even in the Labour Party, yes. very few, despite all the efforts, very few amendments got through. True. Now then, how do you now, A, change the environment, the thinking, yes. especially with Brexit down the road. Well, there are 197 reservations. Some of those are totally trivial, so to be insulting. Sharp axes yeah. and knives. Uh, prostitution. Dangerous dogs. Licensing, which has yeah. been the province of Welsh magistrates since 1871. Right. Uh, charitable connections. Yeah. Collections. And dozens of other cases. My uh, amendment that I proposed in the House was that a joint body should be set up to examine each and every one of the reserve matters over a period of 12 months and to study whether it is necessary for that to be reserved, with the onus being on HMG to show that it should be reserved rather than the other way around. Uh, we didn't carry it. and. Uh, I'm sure that some sort of approach like that ha has to yes, be... Yes, right, but, but on top of that now, we have all the dangers of hundreds upon hundreds of EU regulations yes. being dragged into the centre, yes. maybe kept in the centre, Yes. so the problem is now even bigger. Yes, it exacerbates uh, an already existing problem. As to what percentage of those legislative powers... And they constitute a very substantial bulk altogether, perhaps 25, 30, perhaps 35 percent of all legislative authority is not vested in Westminster, but in Brussels. It's been there since the 1st of January 1973. Yeah. And when it returns, it will not return to Wales, it no. will return to London. And now the next question is, which applies both to that issue, the, the Brussels um, matters, uh, and the devolved matters, is how do you sort out the question according to certain established principles? In other words, I would like to see an Act of Parliament which says everything is to be transferred, nothing is to be reserved unless there is a clear, cus a clear case for reservation according to principles A, B, C and D laid out. In other words, that you have a watershed. That which belongs this side of the watershed is reserved. That would belong the other side, yeah. belongs to the devolved authority. But don't you think that really now there's an issue here as to how best to govern the UK? Yes. It is not just a question for Wales even. Yes. You bring in Scotland and Northern Ireland and even possibly as time goes on, the regions of England. Don't you think that we now need to move to a new well, and a, a better system of devolution? That, that's a huge question, but I, I would begin to approach it in, in this way by, by saying that um, what we have to have is a statutory structure which sets out those principles which must govern every devolution from now onwards. Secondly, that there are principles which must be upheld 
from day to day and week to week and month to month in all the relationship between Wales uh, and um, the United Kingdom. What it means in relation to Brexit is this, that there must be much more good faith than exists at the moment. Carwin Jones has uh, described a situation where he and his Scottish colleague are hardly ever consulted That's right. in relation to Brexit matters. I raised this in the House of Commons last week. House of Lords. House of Lords last week, uh, and um, indeed put it to them that uh, they dealt with the whole issue of wealth by high disdain, with high disdain, those are my words, not Carolyn Jones, he was using diplomatic language. I wasn't. Yeah. But we were talking the same sort of evidence. Yeah. And that is the whole point, you see. Yeah. When it comes to devolution, when it comes to Brexit, when it comes to any consideration of the rights and privileges of Wales as a nation, we are England's oldest colony. That's right. The, the cobwebs of imperialism still exist. Right. Now then, but I'm trying to seek how do we change it? There should be some campaigning or other. People are, we, a lot of people make your points. Some people well, in the Welsh Assembly make it. The odd member mm -hmm. of Parliament say it. The odd member of Plaid Cymru say it. Yes. People in the SNP say it. Well, we're saying some people in the Labour Party say thing, it. But we're talking, I think, essentially the same language. When I'm talking about a statutory structure, I am talking of some form of dominion status. That's right. Yeah. Dominion status is something very fluid, very pliant, full of exciting possibilities. Yeah. It's developed in a pretty ramshackle, but a pretty disorganized sort of way altogether. The dominions entered the First World War without anybody asking them. They did the second in the same in the Second World War. The Statute of Westminster of nineteen thirty one shows an immense scope by today, what does dominion status mean? It means almost anything that yeah. the mother country wishes it to mean and the devolved authority wishes it to mean in their particular yes. context. Yeah. I understand what it all means and you've explained it to me more than once before. <clears throat> One problem with it is I think a lot of people who are with us on the whole issue are rather concerned about the word dominion. It carries connotations, doesn't it? Whereas it's it's actually a, a, a freedom thing, well, as opposed it, to a con enclosing. It comes from the Latin word "dominus," meaning meaning master. Yeah, um, that's it, what I meant. It's used. Um, Dylan Thomas used it in that famous poem, "And death shall have no dominion." Yeah, it means authority. Yeah. Strangely enough, in the preamble to the Act of Union, the preamble to the Act of Union says. The country, principality, and dominion of Wales. Yes, we were called a dominion That's in what those we were days called, yes. because, of course, we were part of the domus, yes. as it were, of um, of the monarch. And um, do I take it therefore now that what? you are in favour of a constitutional convention? Oh yes, a lot of people are calling for that now. Yes, most, even most even the Labour Party are calling most for it. I think that the Scottish model of what happened in Scotland and the ordered way, way in which people of different parties and of no parties at all put their heads together and put the affairs of Scotland above all other personal interests was tremendous. Yes. And uh, without something like that, what would you say about the future of, of devolution in Wales if we are going on the current trend? At the moment, we have been swindled in relation to um, devolution, as I've tried to explain. Yeah. We've been shortchanged very badly. We are... Uh, there is a pretense that we have been elevated in terms of devolution by way of a reserve constitution. We have been diminished, ruthlessly diminished. Yes. That is the short point. And in relation to the Brussels authority, which will, be, will come to us in a year and a half, two years' time, will be further diminished unless something very substantial is done about it. Yes, so there's a lot so of work to be done. It calls out for some sort of joint body to start with. I'd like to see a body involving Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and England, a Westminster body set up, really thrashing out these matters, but according to set principles, according to presumptions. Yes. The presumptions being that matters should belong to the devolved authority unless there is a jolly good reason to the contrary. That's right.
Well, there we go. So there's a lot of work to be done. Very much so. And uh, the fear is... If